Last we left off, our group had made their way to an ancient ruin that contained a defunct soul stone, a device that was once used to capture the souls of the dead and repurpose them in the name of the nation of Prospero. Baselius, a leader of a secret cell belonging to the Volic State, had asked the group to head to this location to help find the missing robot Simon, and to figure out what had happened to Keselenkov and her agents. The group explored the ancient ruins, uncovering crypts, hostile spirits, angry robots, an undead being known as Skaya, and eventually Simon, who seemed to be in the middle of an existential crisis. The group spoke with Simon for quite some time, learned much about the ancient ruins, and more about who Simon was before he became a robot. The group also learned that the creator of this soul stone, Master Ixon, had ironically become a victim to the very thing he created, and was now a sentient robot just like Simon. Kaiman Panoply learned that some being known as Malthus was interested in them, or their lineage. The spectral being known as Skaya spoke of Malthus as the Dark Master, and that he called Panoply and Kaim children of light, presumably referring to their grandmother. Skaya, just like the being known as Phobos, was a messenger to the Dark Master, and represented an aspect of undeath. Phobos was dread, while Skaya represented the spirit or specter. Worried about the fate of Kessa, Kaim persuaded the group to delve deeper, until they eventually came across the fractured soul stone that the ancient ruins were built around. It seemed that Kessa was trapped within a sentient shard of the soul stone, and the group managed to destroy the shard and free Kessa from her prison. Trouble seemed to follow the group, though, as the exit of the ancient Soulstone ruins was blocked by the Venator of the Venandi, Velrenith Adararn, and one of his fellow wizards, Sabres, along with a host of cyborg creations and automatons. Thinking fast, Panoply led the group down a spiderweb strung cave and descended further and further into the deep, dark, depths of the world. And this is where we begin today's session. You all find yourselves walking down a narrow cavern, devoid of sunlight. The tunnel feels slightly damp, the cracked rocky surface is cold and slightly moist to the touch. There's no sound other than the clinking of armor, heavy breathing, and footfalls in the darkness. Kessa sighs heavily, a rather rare occurrence. I don't suppose any of you have been this deep below the surface before. I have. My mom works in places like this. Oh, good. Works. That's, you know what most people do in the Underdark. She studies fungi, actually. I mean, she doesn't like mine, but she comes down here for samples. I spent a lot of my childhood, like we'd spend a month underground, I think was the longest. Okay, that would maybe explain why you vanish in the darkness. So interesting. Um. This place creeps me out. This like, seems like the perfect amount of dark for you two ladies. I mean, it's not... There's people down here, you know, some places. But there's just... It's like walking across the world on top. You know, there's bears and wolves and things, and down here there might be other things. Yeah, like illithid and other creatures that want to enslave your mind. I mean, there's creatures up top that want to enslave your mind, too. 
Usually they want to enslave your soul. Slight difference. Uh, maybe. Or turn you into newts. Are there any of those things down here? Pixies? I never saw a pixie before we encountered them. Well, I can handle anything then. Yes, turning into a newt sounds terrible too. Um... Don't recommend it. How far do we keep walking? I have other duties. I mean, do you want to go check and see if so they've gone and try and sneak out? I don't know if that's a good idea. Count yourself lucky to be alive right now. Oh, very lucky. I'm mostly grateful i just hope that i oh, how does your folk say uh something about a pan and into the fryer i don't know well i'm there's a lot of places like caves that come up and we might be down here for a few days but I mean, usually you could tell. There's like fresh air at some point. We could also check in with Pacellius for you if you need us to. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Because I think he thinks I'm dead. Um, I don't think he would have sent us after you if he thought you were dead. So can we not contact him now? We can. I can contact him now. Yeah, we could tell him that we found Kessa and everything is okay. We're just hiding in a dank, dark hole away from the Venandi. We never found a time to rest since our upstairs yeah. encounters, did we? I don't feel great. And Kessa doesn't look great either. No offense. None taken, I feel like shit. Well, Panoply, it's kinda... up to you at this point to... find somewhere for us to... hunker down for a little while, I guess. I mean, did you want to contact Vesalius? Were you gonna... Do you have the ability to do that now? Yeah, I can do it right now. I mean, let's do that, and then... just say please advise at the end of it. Um, so I will cast Sending to Pacellius. Cussa uh, found entered under dark Veldarath and others showed up. Hope to be out in a few days. Uh, advise further, please. There is a fairly long pause as you all continue walking down this narrow cavern until you finally reach sort of a little alcove that at least gives you a little bit of breathing room. Did he send an answer? Um, eventually, you hear the familiar voice of Vesalius. Did you find Simon? What is the status of Simon? Avoid the Venandi. They seem to have figured something out. Tell Kessa to return ASAP. Um, I will cast Sending again. 
Last we saw Simon, he was trying to escape through a portal. We'll relay your message. I will relay that to Kessa. You receive a very, very brief response. That that does not sound promising. Good luck. Well, I mean, how about... I mean, can you see in the dark, Kessa? Yes, but not as well as... Probably you or other creatures that inhabit the Underdark. Further, further down we go, the less real light there is and the harder it is to see even with dark vision. It's best not to have lights at first, I think, until we're rested. I agree, and... We also have a couple of light sources among us, so I think we'll be okay with sight. But we definitely do need to rest before we traverse more. We should... Well, who's hurt the most? I'm... It's you. It might be me. <laughs> You're there limping a lot. Who's hurt the most? <laughs> yeah, it's you. Oh no, I'm totally fine. Okay. I'm gonna crush my Pearl of Power and regain a third spell slot. Third level spell slot. Yeah, my spell slots are not in a good spot. Uh, my health is okay. Maybe. Kessa looks at all of you. Well,. I haven't really been in the Underdark per se, but as usual we have knowledge about it and I would say that if we need a long rest it is better now than before we delve too deep. I mean, I, I, could, I could make sure that nothing could harm us for about eight hours. That would be good. A big tent or house or something? Yeah, it's not too big, unfortunately. It's about a 10 foot radius, so. We can sleep close. Yeah. Sounds better than these dark, dank tunnels. Well, it's temperature controlled, so just tell me where to pop it. Is there room in the, the tunnel that we're in? Yeah. Seems like as good a place as any. Yeah, maybe Kirkseen can take first watch. If I can take last watch, it'd be good. Just uh, stay close because anything that's not inside won't be able to enter. If you notice anything down here, though, you should not look at it yourself should wake somebody else. Wait, anything outside can't enter? What if we leave the perimeter? That's what I'm saying, you shouldn't go outside of it by yourself. It's, uh... So, uh, if you're within the dome when I cast it, you can move in and out freely, but any creature object that's not inside of it can't get in. Spells can't extend through it or be cast from through it, and it's, it'll stay there until I leave, up to eight hours. And can it be seen? 
Yeah, it can be seen. I can make it opaque, though. And I can make it lit or dark. It should uh, be dark for sleeping. Yeah, but it'll be completely trans. It'll be completely transparent inside, so we can see out. But I can make it completely tented, so no one can see in. That that might be nice. Okay. Uh, Turxian will take out a small crystal bead and put it on the ground in front of him and start uh, casting, ritually casting Leoman's tiny hut. One thing this panoply lays down don't make a lot of noise and she looks sideways at Kaim because it carries a long way down here. Got it. You hear a chuckle from Tessa. Sounds like someone just volunteered for some overnight watch. I go to sleep. Yeah, me too. Wake me up when it's my turn. And I have virtually casted a alarm a while back if I used my like uh, I can't remember if I did the end of last session or not but I wanted to use my insta ritual cast on alarm at some point down the tunnel as we were walking okay behind or ahead behind just as we were walking at some point I would have just dropped it so I could have given ourselves somewhat of heads up. I believe it can be within a mile. Just give me a mental alarm. Okay. So you all sit down for the night? in this little tiny hut. And you can all uh, take a long rest. Oh, sorry. I just assumed. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait, is someone going to attack us? I heard you all can, and I just, okay. <laughs> Give him ideas, man. It just doesn't, oh. Bell around. Um. Your alarm, Turksian, did go off. It actually went off twice. And you get the feeling that something crossed it and then crossed back. It would have woken me up. Was it like in the middle, middle of the night? Or... Uh, yeah, probably about four hours into your rest. And who's taking watch of that? Was it during my watch, or did it wake me up? Uh, which watch did you take? He was first watch, I think. Yeah, it would have woken you up. Okay. Um, I would just not to alarm anyone, I probably would just grab a little copper wire and point it at who's ever taken watch and just cast a message to them so that only only they can hear it. And I'll say, something hit my alarm, but it seemed like it went back afterwards. Um, so I don't think anything's 
coming towards us, but make sure you keep your eye out, and uh, I'll let you know if it happens again. Uh, this is Kessa's watch, and you would have received no reply. I don't like that. Um, is Kessa still in the sphere? Nope. Her stuff is there. Okay. Um, I am going to stay up then. But I'm not going... Well, she knows I'm... Do I know if somebody heard it or not? I can't remember. Message. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't say I know if the target hears the message or not. Yeah. You just get no um, reply. Okay, I'm going to assume that I said it more than 120 feet away then. Uh, so I will stay up, but I'm going to try and pretend to be asleep and wait for her to come back. Okay. Uh, she does come back when her shift ends. Okay. Um, I am... I already clicked long rest. Do, do I, have I had the benefits of it, or do am I still on the previous day spell slots? Do you meditate? No, you're a human. No, uh, you're half-elf. Half-elf. I, I think half-elves just sleep. I think it's only elves that meditate, right? Um, When you say like you're staying up, are you, are you just sitting there, though? I would still be laying there. You're fine. It's, it's still resting. Because they're not really doing anything. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to ask, do I use the New Day's spell slot or the previous day's spell slot to cast uh, if I wanted to cast a spell? Oh. Mm. That gets to a gray area where if you cast a spell, you might break your rest. What spell are you casting? I wanted to cast Detect Thoughts when she returned. Uh, so that would be for Zen. It could be the previous day's spell slot, so you'll recover it. Okay, then I'm going to upcast that to a third level, because I had a third level from the Pearl of Power, but I didn't have any second levels. But I will cast Detect Thoughts when she returns and try and get an idea of what happened. I'm not going to delve deeper, but see if she's just having any surface thoughts. Uh, first thought is, as she gets back into the tiny hut is um, everyone's in desperate need of a shower. Her second thought, uh, roll a stealth check. Second thought is it like vaguely goes over into I guess the wizard can't sleep. Um but you catch a thought as she was entering the hut, like wonder if they'll follow us. Pretty sure that was Velroneth's familiar that I took out. And thought like that is going through her mind. Okay. Um awesome. I 
I'm going to try not to hyperventilate <laughs> and I guess let who's ever going to take their next shift. The rest of the night's fairly uneventful. You all wake up and it is still dark as anything. Uh, I'm not going to walk as far from you guys as I usually do just because I... You won't be able to see me. Since it's been several hours, do you guys think we should probably go back? I can't imagine they're not going to be there a while. We could check? What do you think, Kelsa? I just don't want to deal with them. I would surmise that they aren't going to be leaving anytime soon. I think that place was lost to, to the nation of Prospero. So I imagine that they are inspecting it, cataloging it, you know, whatever crap that bureaucrats do. How far down the tunnel did we go? Maybe a couple hours. Okay, so more than a mile. Never mind, continue. Is it still like going down, down? Or is it evening out at all? It's still going down. Have there been any side passages? Very small ones, like very small. Okay, like not that we like we'd have to squeeze through if we could fit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll go first, um, but I'm not gonna go that far ahead. I can hear Kime behind me, so I can keep up with you. For the new day. Now Arvin can jump the gun, and I'd like everybody to roll a d6. Am I rolling a new one? Yeah. Alright, eventually... You reach... Kind of like a void in the cavern underground. So much larger opening. And this one has multiple different paths. Um, some look natural, some look like they might have been hewn. Uh, the rock has been hewn or dug out or blasted or magically molded. But you're pretty sure that this is definitely what you call the un Underdark. Are there traps in any direction except the one we came from? Yeah. Uh, roll a survival check. By tracks, I mean little feet like ours or drag marks of things. Any things. So there are a good five different directions in here. Uh, one direction is more man-made or 
the rocks look like they've been hewn with tools. And they look like dwarven sized feet marks that go through this is the prominent feature. A another one looks like it is more a mix of magically altered and hewn rock and the footprints look more in line with Turksian and Arvin. They're very faint too. Mixed in are other footprints of various humanoids and less than humanoids. Um, you're not quite sure. <laughs> Great. Um, for the other three, one of them looks like there are a lot of cobwebs down it. The other doesn't really have many tracks whatsoever. Um, there are tracks, but they're really faint, hard to tell. They don't look humanoid, various different creatures, old, maybe new, who knows. And then the last one looks like it's partially hewn, partially natural, and they're, the, the prints are muddy. It's drier mud, but you can definitely tell that wherever the tracks came from was muddy. So, I explain this to the whole group. I'm like, there's some dwarves down here. They're not super friendly from what I understand, but I've never dealt with them. Uh, this way looks probably drow. Uh, some of them are cool and some of them aren't. There's like a bunch of, I mean, it's like some humans suck, you know? So, uh, depends what you come across. There's water down this way, and there could be a tunnel completely full of water. Like, we could just end up having to go into the water, whether we like it or not. I don't know how well everybody swims, but some of those are, like, there's no way out of them. There's more cobwebs down that way. I mean, we'd probably have some spiders. Could also be drought on there. They like spiders. What directions does everything lead? Like, um, does everything lead away from the direction I think the Nation of Prospero is? Like, are there any paths that specifically go like north or east? Uh, man. Um, roll another intel right, man. or survival check. Okay. You have been trained by your mom to kind of figure out how directions work in the Underdark, because there's no stars, there's no sun, there's no real wind. You've learned that fungus grows on a specific side of the rocks. And that's how you tell direction. So you look around, look around, look around. Eventually you find some type of mushroom. And you surmise that the drow are in the opposite direction of the nation of Prospero. And that the dwarves, however you wanted to put it, are in the other direction that would potentially lead closer to the Nation of Prospero. The other paths are sort of in the middle of those two. It 
let's not go to the dwarves. This way is towards, like, and we'll end up closer to the Volok state, in which case, like, it wouldn't be that terrible, right, Kessa? You'd be home. And then, uh, I'm assuming they wouldn't be mean to us since we've helped you guys. Reasonable? Yeah, something like that. Okay, and then the other... Like, this way might lead us toward the Dragonborn, but, you know, we're not on bad terms with them either, so... Either way. Spiders, drow, water. Unknown. It all sounds terrible, but I will trust your judgment. I think spiders would build on a path that went somewhere, because things have to pass through it for them to eat. So if you guys don't mind fighting spiders... I mean, I'm assuming you're not talking about the common house spider, but something oh, horrific. Oh no. <laughs> big, big ones. Big, like those, those webs. Perfect. You know, going back the other way is starting to sound more and more appealing. The way we came? Yeah. I mean, spiders. She starts, like, scratching herself. Oh, you don't... We could take our chances with the drow or the, the totally unknown tunnel. I just don't want to go down to the water and end up at a dead end, you know? Oh no, perfectly understandable. Um, you make the decision. Or you all. I say we go down the spiders and Kessa, I'll protect you. Don't say no to that. She, like, looks at Kaim with daggers. I think she's in. I can hold your hand while we go through. No. We all smell, but you smell really bad. Alright, fine. Let's go down the water and I'll take a quick bath there. I mean, it could be like, do you really want to do that kind? He shrugs. You want to take a bath, Kessa? Yes, but I don't know if this is where I want to take it. Well, I'm just, yes. Yeah, do you guys want to take a bath? It can't be that far because it's still mud up here. You know what I'm saying? It's dried mud, but it can't be more than like an hour or something to the water. And honestly, we could fill our skins up. Arvin? I'm along for the ride. Let's do it. Let's go see the water and then we can always come back if it's impassable. Anytime we leave time to water, it seems like a good idea to me. Yeah. Sounds good. Water. Water. Water in the Underdark. How the hell did I get here? What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, I don't think that's the correct phrase to be, you know, defying the gods with when you're in the Underdark, but, you know, you do you. That drow guy still talks to his drow clan? Like, Bellarmouth guy? 
No. I don't think he has any association with the drow whatsoever. He is a drow, right? Yeah, but he's like older than dirt. He has a beard. Have you ever seen a drow with a beard? No, uh, actually, no. Well, no, you're right. Yeah, mm, he's like the least drow of all drow. You think it's an illusion? No, I think he's done something to actually grow a real beard. I don't know. He's a wizard. He waves his hand and ta-da, beard. Dirksian. I mean, I can't do that. Is your beard, Dirksian? Must not be a very good wizard. I just think you have a little room to grow. Obviously, look at his face. There's tons of room. Panoply's gonna walk ten feet ahead of where she hears Kaim dang 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 going. And off to one side, the right side maybe. Okay. Um I would like all of you to roll stealth. Yes! <laughs> to see it. Everybody complains about the clank clank, but the moment there's a big monster, everybody's like thanking Kime for being there and taking all the hits. Monster. He's saying this very loudly while he's walking with everyone. Panoply. It's like you don't see her, but you just hear a hiss, like a hiss. Like shh. Harvin <laughs> just grimacing the whole time. Alright. You all start going down a fairly A dark and windy cavern. If I can find you all. Dun. What's gonna get us? There's a place. Something's gonna get us. Twists and turns. Kessel stays fairly far back. She's just really not digging this place. Um, down this area, Panoply, there are various skeletons, husks of creatures. Any people-ish creatures? Sure. Mm. What remains of them? Anything glint as we go by? Perception check. Yeah, there's a there's a glint on one of the things. Does it have 
cobwebs attached to it? No. Is there anything around it? Any lines in the dirt? Yes. Like a little rope around it kind of line thing? Like somebody has a string? Yeah. I... Who's the first person walking, like, after me? Is it Kaim? Mm -hmm. You suddenly feel, like, a hand on your chest. You see nothing. Hey, see right there? And I point. Step where, around. Where are you pointing? Uh, can you light up something for a sec? Ooh, that's uh, a new ping. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So, can you make light for a second? Me? Sure. And, uh, well, yeah. Or and whomever. Kaim will cast light. I've never done this uh, before. Huh. So this is a better light than your sword. And I will... Or I'll do it, I'll do it on myself, actually. Okay. Or you can do it on your sword, or whatever. I'm just saying this yeah. is better than your sword's light. I'll this doesn't do go it. so far. And then I pull him close to where the line is and say, look, look at this. You guys look at this. Just don't touch that. I don't know what that was all about. Um... Oh, because you have a save against light itself. <laughs> Save yourself. Save me against your own spells. Pretty ridiculous. Let me get you the details on light. Sorry, I've never used this. <laughs> but anyway, I pull them close. People could see me in the light, and I show them there's this line in the dirt. Don't touch. Don't cross that line. Walk on this side. All right, bright light, 20 foot radius, dim, and additional 20. With it lit up, can we see what that object is? Uh, yeah, it looks like there is some sort of jewelry um, on the corpse, question mark. And there is some sort of fine filament attached to the jewelry. There. Worth it. Not worth it, Kaim. You want me to go get it? No. Look in the dirt, and I, like, push his head down. Look. Do you see that? That's a trap. Oh. I've been over traps before. That's easy. No, no. I, I'm holding his arm. That's an ass. Something. I will say, even with his light, it is, like, right at the end of his vision. Not everybody has a Bloomstalker range. I'll pull him a little closer, just I mean, like up to the line. I, I closer can't. To the line. Do, you, do we want more light? I can do more light. No, no, no. I'm just saying. Like 40 feet from Kaim is about there. I'll pull him a little closer. Fuck it. Tyndall. Okay. Wait, but do, do you guys see it? Do you see that there's a line around it in the dirt? A rock falls from up here down onto the ground. Please. So we go around it? Yes. Okay. And where was it again? Can you point? There. I okay. am going single file, following in the footsteps. Arvin, makes a make a dexterity th uh, saving throw. Oh, jeez. 
Let's feed that one. You narrowly dodge like a filament that's on the ground. Do you know which direction we should be going? Around that. Here? And it goes back the way we came. Wait, why? How is Kaim leading? Does he know where the traps are? That nope. What's going on? All I know is avoid here. <laughs> I can't play a whole lot onto him, like literally onto his arm to steer him around it because he's a dumbass. Yeah, now that there's plenty of light, I'm gonna give myself uh, another know. rock falls right there. Um, Turkson, watch out! Turkson, make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, ah, that's too late. If I could select just myself, I will do that. Dexterity? Yep. Oh, okay. That was wobbly. Turksy narrowly dodges, dodges a line of filament. I want to make sure I give like 30 feet distance as long as I can see the people in front of me but still following along in their footsteps. Uh, I think we should spread out a little bit so if someone triggers something that doesn't smush all of us. Oh no, I think it did end. Or set a bridge. Overhead bridge. It's a river. Isn't it? It's a river. It's an overhead bridge. Okay. Oh, so we could go under. But you do hear the sound of water in that direction. Is there anybody up on top of this bridge? If I pause for a moment and look up. Do I see any shadows against the far wall? Nope. Have you put that damn thing out? Oh. Kendall. How high is the bridge? Uh, about 10 feet. Oh, okay. So you'll head down the cavern toward the sound of rushing water. Cass is still with us? Somewhere? Somewhere. Did we hear rocks fall behind us? Yeah. <laughs> ah! And I think that is a good place to take a little break. Oh, good. God! Seriously, what's that rocks fall and everybody dies from? It's just an old D and D trope. The DM's tired of everyone's shit. He just says rocks fall, everybody dies, and gets up and walks <laughs> away.
So from that uh, bridge going down this cavern, um, you walk for about a mile, and what you notice is that the caverns become, like, slimy and wet. Is there fungus among us? Yeah, but they're covered in a really strange mucus. Panoply? Don't touch those. What does this mean? Oh, I was Just about to touch it. Okay. Don't, don't touch it. Kind of back off. And of like curses under her breath, which is the only way you can tell where she is. Are you ahead or am I? I'm ahead and I push him back. It's first. And ahead of you, you can see kind of a river. There's some moving water, but it's not really moving like the sounds made it out to be. It really sounded like there was real rushing water when you were coming down this way. But this is, I don't know, almost like stagnant. Stay here. Time. Stay here for a minute. Just stay here for a minute, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and just just wait like five minutes, okay? Five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a little scout, a stealthy scout. Oh, Kaim will turn off his light. I'm gonna make sure to tell Kaim every minute that passes and count them one at a time. As you scout around, there, there are like fish in the water, but from your vantage point, they almost look deformed. Excellent. Uh, it just looks like a little watering cave. This is an elevated position up here. Yeah, it is. Down here is like, goes down to the water. Same with, uh,. Kind of this little island. Okay, so basically everything else is elevated, right? Yeah. Is there any water movement? Or is it just stagnant? Uh, there's some movement in it. Like, okay. You're not sure if it's the fishies or, you know, maybe the water is moving, but... It, it definitely isn't moving how you would have imagined it, that it sounded down the cavern. Okay, it's been five minutes, Kai. Hey, I'm back. It's oh. enough. Sorry. Hey, Kai, you're going last. I hear there a are... voice, but I don't see her. Shoot. I don't remember what they're called. It's the lag... Mites. mites that come from the ground? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Like There's an not M. just the lag mites. Hey. Arvin, do you want to go first? Kaim, you're last. You're going to stay back here with me? Absolutely. What did you see up ahead? There is water. Just be very quiet near the water's edge and don't splash, please. Sounds good. Uh, we heard rushing water. Did you see anything? Uh, there's water movement. It's not as rushing as I thought it was, for sure. Well, maybe it was the rushing movement of a gigantic cave monster that we heard run past. Yeah, that's comforting. Get over oh. there and fill your water skin. If you're taking a bath, take a bath. Perksine, you watch him. I'm gonna not watch him. I'll watch him. I probably can't stop him. That's fine. Wait, but I'm taking just saying... a bath? I can take my armor off and go quietly will that take you a long time to do and then does it take an, back on does it take like an hour to don and doff your armor or some 
I don't know. <laughs> it's horrible. I always imagine the armor being like a slip on. <laughs> a play suit. And I just wear leather under it. Hey, did anything bad happen? You went alone? Yeah. Perksy was watching him. No. Okay. I'll watch Kessa. You guys fuck off. I slapped him in the back of the head. Fill your water skin? I'm not in need of the bath like I am apparently. Uh, Kessa approaches the edge and like puts her finger in the water and sniffs it. She makes a face. I don't think this water is drinkable. Cannibally, you've led me astray. Oh, it's better to have water. And she looks back at you, and you all look back in horror. Huh? Oh my goodness, Kessa. She's splashing around over there. It's a crab blue As a big giant creature emerges from the water. Oh fucking no. Can it be called, be called a crab lulu? Sure. Yes. Crab Thulu. <laughs> uh, uh, question. Appears right behind Kessa. How dark is it in here? Really dark. Are we able to see since I turned off the lights? Kessa is just barely within your vision. Okay. With that, I'd like everybody to roll for initiative. Perfect. That's what you get for going Please. first. I always go first. Well, it's got like a different thing, not a fist anymore. My favorite part of the game is rolling dice. Oh, I have a chance. Here it comes. <laughs> yeah. Look at you, BB. Oh, I did. <laughs> wow. Of all the people to go first is Gofi. That's not a bad thing, though. Combat tracker update, too. I can actually see what everybody's initiative is now. Yeah, it is. Before we start. Hmm. Including uh, the monsters the too. The module probably broke. Okay. I had a module on it that was for the first round. The initiatives were blind. Yeah. Uh, it's visible now. Oh well. Um. Why does it show Arvin? I must have clicked something. All right, Gilfi. Gilfie's up. Oh, now it just turned back on. Uh, Gilfie is going to lie at the one in front of Perxian, giving Perxian the help action. Uh, no, it's going to give the help. She is going to give the help action to Kaim, and then fly away. Kessa, knowing that look upon your faces and hearing a splash behind her, pulls out a short sword. On the first turn, she gets advantage. 
advantage against any creature that hasn't taken a turn yet. Ooh. Oh, the targeting is different too. Well, Kessa. Oh my god. Um. Yeah. Good thing Kessa has two attacks. So we can roll that again. Hey! Much better. <laughs> it's a cool animation. Alright, um, she gets sneak attack. Does a good chunk of damage to it. And, uh, she does look a little nervous. All right. The one next to Turksian. <laughs> Climbs out of the water. And tries to pincer Turksian. No. Hmm. It's gonna try it again. Yeah. It's not used to mages. Dungeon wizard. Kime. Oh man. Your damsel is in distress. Uh, which one? <laughs> um. Uh, Kaim is gonna run here. This action echo. And he will attack the one next to Turxian twice. Get him. First one's at advantage because of Guilty. Yes. From the echo. And that start. All right, you. Swing your blade at the chitinous creature. It really does look like Crab Thulu. <laughs> Panoply, your turn. And uh, please, in time as that one in hand is going to say in a like a loud stage whisper, uh, don't stay near the edge of the water if possible, please. Target the one near. Yes, uh, oh, that targeting is cool. And shoot it. I'm going to. Uh, how do I do this? Okay, so I hit it. I'm going to damage it, and then I think favored foe? Yes. Children. 
and then I just read it again. Or not really. And then I'm going to move. Slightly higher ground. I'm done. Alrighty. Turkson, your turn. Um Turkson is going to reach out and try and put his hand on the creature and Ask the shocking grasp. Pretty good. Okay, now that creature cannot take a reaction. So Turxian is going to start trying to follow panically get to slightly higher ground and end his turn. Chool! Tries to pincer Kessa. Now miss once. Oh, and that one hits. dare you um and kessa is now grappled in the pincer i will opportunity attack with sentinel Ruh -ruh. Ruh Speed is down to zero. Okie dokie. Arvin. I get a turn. That's so exciting. I am going to cast aid. I had three people selected. Let's see if it works this time. All right. Buddy. It worked. And to my good wizard friend, we're going to hand him a little bit of bardic inspiration. Whoa, got some weird Ooh, look at that effect. I didn't really see it. It just kind of popped up really quick. <laughs> oh, there putting, it goes. Putting on music. Yeah. I music. Oh, I didn't hey. hear it. Whoa, what is going on? Whoa. Okay, take a few steps back, and my turn is done. All righty. Well, this stalagmite that Panoply was next to isn't really a stalagmite. Ah! Uh, Stalagchulu. It is a thing that looks like a stalagmite with tentacles. Panoply, oldest trick in the underground book. And it's going to attack the four closest things it can see, which is not Panoply. And <laughs> rolls in that one. Rolls one for each target? Or one total for everyone? Um, yeah, good, good question. I mean, I'm, I'm totally cool with it missing all of us, but I was... <laughs> 
Yeah, the technical rules when you multi. Uh... And it has what reach? It's. I'm just gonna play as the one attack. Jeez. Fifty feet. Holy. Well, that was sad. I don't think so. All right. It is now Gilfie's turn. Okay. Uh, Gilfie has a fly speed of, I should have had it prepared, 60 feet, I believe. Um, so yeah, she can only make it to this one here to give uh, my advantage, and then she will just... Can, no, she does not want to go that way after seeing that thing. Uh, she's going to go back up the tunnel a little bit, end her turn. She doesn't see any stalagmites up there, right? Kessa. Well, Kessa's grappled. Yep. So she's going to do what she knows to do best and attack with disadvantage, flailing at this thing. That's sad. Oof. Darn disadvantage. And the chul next to Kine makes two pincer attacks. and a miss. Kaim, your turn. It's gonna get a whole lot of bright in here. Tyndall. Oh, damn it. Oh no. <laughs> nice. My gosh. He's gonna attack one. So many cool things come out with Foundry in one week. <laughs> this is an amazing map. And he is going to No, he's going to attack the one by Kessa with the Echo. Whoops. Um, shit, I have two. Let's see if this works. I'm going to undo the damage. So undo on that one. Kessa flops to the ground as the crab has been cracked. This echo is going to fly towards Panoply. Closish to her. And that will end Kaim's turn. Panoply, your turn. Panoply was panicked. She saw something, saw it not attack her, and then suddenly the room lit up. And now everything could see her. How, what is the drop next to me? Like if I jump instead of run? Just to the north of you? It's like 10 feet right there. I wish to make an acrobatics check to jump off that. Okay. Assume I do that reasonably well? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm just... Get back, get back! I can't, it's not my turn. 
And then I'm going to turn around and it's actually Hunter's Market. The rope roper. The thing. Or or not, shoot it. <laughs> I'm gonna try to shoot it again. This light is so bright. <clears throat> it's really bright, Kime. <laughs> I'm done now. <clears throat> Turkstein. Um, Turkstein saw how quickly that one crab went down. So he's going to mutter to himself and deal with one problem at a time and call out, make it quick, guys. And he is going to target the tentacled thing and cast a banishment. Is this new? What is this? I'm over it. It banishes it for me. <laughs> I, I had I had hit apply active effects, hoping that that was to save the throw. But I think Wait, it what happened? It. Oh, it's now banished again. Huh. Okay. What is, what is this? What happened? It's just gone. The stalagmite disappears. You guys got one minute to kill that thing and get moving. Then Turxian is going to start making his way uh, down the walkway and end his turn. Arvin. One minute. Ah, so much pressure. Okay, I'm going to whisper at the crab. Chulu, the crab Chulu. Chulu Lulu. I selected it. Why well, did it not select it? Hold on, alt. Um, is it wisdom? Yeah, and yes, I held alt, and yes, it, the target thing popped up around it, as it does every single time I do these. It fails. It takes 12. And then it has to swim the fuck away? Yeah. Get away. Fuck off, crab. It goes... I'm absolutely taking my opportunity attack. And so it, it might... goes 10 feet down. It might have to stay. Oh, that's true. Time always screws your... I screw everybody up yes. right now. <laughs> and then run. Yeah, it stays. Sword, get over here. That's Arvin's turn? Yeah, that's just a good combo. the groper banishment the the only time it breaks is if you lose concentration or end the spell or the tent the minute stop right right so it's a concentration uh i don't think it has a save i think it's just uh you attempt to send one creature you can see within range to another plane of existence it must succeed or be banished uh, if the target is native to this plane, the target is banished to a harmless demi-plane while there is incapacitated, and it must remain there until the spell ends. Uh, if the target is native to a different plane of existence, then it's banished returning to its home plane, and it will stay there if a whole minute it lasts. Cool. Otherwise... And I did look... We're going to play it how I played it, because it rolled a natural one. But 
I thought it was one tendril targets four creatures. It's four separate attacks for the tendril. So oh. technically, it would have rolled four different times. But the nat one was funny. We'll see. We surprised it. Yeah. If you have a, a single attack that targets multiple things, then you only roll one attack roll. And that's where I got thrown. Understandable. Um, I believe it is Gilfy. If I can pull this thing up. Gilfy's turn. Okay. Uh, Gilfy is going to do a flyby uh, for time and then keep flying. And she is going to be looking at. A, can she make a perception for Ezra Hatcher? Because she did the help action. That's it. Uh, what's she trying to perceive? Just whether any of these stalagmites on the other side of the bridge might also be sentient. Uh, she can roll. Okay. Um, I'm forgetting now, is it sight or sound she has perception? Yes, sight or yeah. sound. Basically everything. Advantage. Yeah. Unless she's following her nose. Oh, your nose. They look like stalagmites. Fantastic. Alrighty. Oh, by the way, um, I fucked up and my echo is over the limit, so it poofs. Come to daddy. Alright, uh, Kessa pulls out a... Hand light crossbow, not a hand crossbow, light crossbow, and shoots Crab Thulu. Wow, today is not her day. Oh, she will shoot it again. Oh, who invited this lady? I don't like this place. <laughs> the Chul. Your turn. All right, we're going full swing on this guy. Advantage. Oh, fire! Disaster averted. More time. He's going to run over 30 feet while screaming Tyndall. And that'll end his turn. Oh, Cassa's profile is missing her poison. Hmm. Oh, well, she has to hit for it to work, so it doesn't matter. All right, you all have about 50 seconds, or what are you guys doing? 54 seconds. Let's go! Scooting across this bridge. You guys want to keep going, or you want, want me to... I mean, this is good for now. It only has Ma, so long now. arms. Uh, we're over 50 foot <laughs> from that groper. Get over here. Do you continue on or? I'm gonna. I could maybe I could shoot it from a really long ways away. Okay, yeah. I'll stab my ground here and keep it here. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> why don't? Why, why don't we just keep moving? Okay. All right. Did I? Would I have any idea what that creature is or if it's? naturally occurring in this plane of existence. Uh, 
Um, roll an intelligence check. You've read some books about things and stuff, and you're fairly certain it's a creature called a roper. There's stories about them in the Underdark, and that they just sort of, uh, they're opportunistic predators. Cool. So you get the idea that they're... It's probably coming back. Yeah. All right, so you all uh, retreat down and you all get fairly far and then pause as you hear a very strange voice. Thank you for taking care of that horrible creature that's been plaguing my waters. Recognize it? Coming from direction? Uh, it's coming from your head. It's always comforting. You're welcome. Who are you? Kind of like spinning around because he doesn't know it's coming from his head. The voice tells you I am the keeper of the water. I feed many things in this cavern, make sure that they have plenty to drink. looking uh, up. Can swords still let up? Mm -mm. It is not. Canopy, you do see a ripple in the murky water. May we pass, please? Well, it depends if you have anything to give me. Or did they take from my water? But didn't we just do you a favor? That's what you just said. Well, one favor. But you didn't ask if you could have the water. Ervin, get back to water. If we returned it, would we be okay to cross? Well, I'd really like if you'd stay. Fortunately, we have an appointment that we're late for. Oh. Anybody I might know. We're late. We're late for a very important date. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, Arvin's talking, I slowly creep forward to Kaiv and grab his arm and tuck, tuck, tuck back and see if he'll follow me. What do you want for the water? Well, you all seem like you would make great friends. Speaking of friends... Uh, may we see you? I'm gonna approach the bridge. I don't know, I'm rather shy. 
how can we get to know you if we can't see you? Well, it depends if you want to be my friend. I mean, you did kill two of my friends. I would definitely like to be your friend. Oh, wonderful. I swear it doesn't hurt. Friends were hurting your waters, weren't they? Oh. Oh no. The two you killed were my friends and they were protecting the water. The one that you banished. Well. He was a pain, but I imagine he'll be back. If I think I know what you did to it, that was funny. Arvid's just got his eyes peeled into the water. So he's not your friend? Do you want us to permanently handle him? It? Well, that would be lovely. Tessa... Like, looks at you all. I guess this is what I was talking about. Things that are trying to enslave your mind. I take another couple steps to the bridge. The thing will eventually come back. I... can I see it? Just the edge of my range here? Yeah. Let's get the roper at the max range. Alright, if you sit at max range, I'm not gonna have you. It, it's so slow. Okay. <laughs> Can it reach me? He's just pelting it. No. Not at your max range. Okay, and I can see 90 feet in dark vision. <laughs> yeah, it, it moves a whole 10 feet. Oh. Back up. Ten feet. I stay at max range. The roper eventually dies to a torrent of uh, arrows, falls into the water, and something takes it. You swear you saw a bigger tentacle. <laughs> yes. Oh, that one was annoying. It will taste good. Thank you, friend. So you're a friend, but you're still not going to show your face, huh? Well, I think that requires you to come and visit me. <clears throat> I'm going to turn back to the group and ask if anybody has an offering for tentacle person. Time searches through his bags and pockets. I could always throw Kaim in. She seems friendly. I wouldn't mind. You a good swimmer? Um, I imagine my armor would weigh me down. I could take it off and... No, 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 no. One question. Who all has returned communication with this friend? I have. I, I think I said you're welcome. I definitely have. Kessa has not... has not responded. Okay, so just Turkseen and Kessa have not. Gilfie. Yeah, and Gilfie. Um... So the the thing, whatever it is, says I can bring you to your mother, Kaim. Oh wait. No, I'm sorry. That's Panoply. I know where Panoply's mother is. It's Panoply's mother. Did the rest hear that or just me? 
All of you heard it. Okay. Yeah, please gonna creep up to the edge. You remember all those mirror shards I took that I wanted to make arrows out of? Yeah. I'm going to dump them in the water. Ooh, shiny. Those are for you. Oh, kind. I don't think I can give you, a, you what you want, because I don't know if Kessa wants it too, but she hasn't talked to me, so maybe she does. What is it that you want? Who are you really? Oh, my friends call me Kozgarag. I just want to be your friend. Forever. I don't know, guys. She seems cool to me. No Think what? I'm good to cross? Luke, is there anything out there? I want Way you down to. Here. I want you to meet somebody. Sure, he would like to be your friend. Wait, can we see across the bridge? Is there an exit? Is there another cave? Is there a tunnel? There's a tunnel that way, and then up, up there. Well, kind. I don't want to meet him. He doesn't seem like a good man. But I'm sure that. You want that blade fixed? Uh, sorry, I saw the one up to the left. You said there was another one? Down south? Oh, okay. Guys, we don't have to cross this bridge, why don't we just keep going? But, my friends... Time. She can't help you fix your sword. I don't think she can. Yeah, she lives in water and has tentacles. You need opposable thumbs for that kind of work. Let's just walk to the south. That'll make me sad. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to go. Unless you want to show yourself. Um, otherwise, bye for now. Promise you won't scream. Enjoy the mirror shards. Nom 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 nom. That's a shame. I guess Lucifera will just remain in the dark. Is there a reaction from anybody in the group? Yeah, please keeps going to the south. Kessel looks at you all. You shouldn't have responded to it. Well, I don't live in the Underdark. How was I to know? Is it? I'm a friendly person. I don't know, but it was clearly probing your minds. Yeah, Seemed Not to well. know a lot about you. It did. My mom doesn't mind the dark. You should dump that water, by the way, I think. Glug, 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 glug. I don't know. As of late, so many voices are in my head. Really? Yeah. Over the last few days? We had the... What was it? Upstairs? Uh, it upstairs, but uh, in the ruins... While we were outside. I agree. A lot of voices in our heads. It's not very pleasant. Let's get out of here. Alrighty. It's a shame Kim didn't jump in the water when he had the chance. I'm 
You're gonna sink if you ever jump in the water. You realize that? That oh, armor? Yeah. I he know. said he was gonna take it off. That takes so long and it smells so bad. I'll clean it, I promise. That water current was funky too. I'm it sorry, takes five to take it off. That's not too bad. You all travel on. Um, this creature does constantly bombard your minds with thoughts. It's mostly like, come back, friends. Come back. But as you keep traveling on into the Underdark, you walk aimlessly along this water path until eventually you get to a point where you feel like the water looks clean and smells clean and smells clean keeping careful watch again I will test the water and then this is better to Kessa than fill up water skins We still hear voices? Nope, not anymore. Arvin is skeptical of the water. I drink half a water skin and then refill it in front of him. Yeah, you are from here. That doesn't make me feel better about it. Is our general area pretty safe or seem safe? Kind of. Yeah, as safe as it can be. You do travel down a cave. Well, the entire thing is a cave. And ahead of you, I'm pretty sure you see and smell a fire. I smell that? Yeah. It's people ahead? Or someone ahead? The dwarves? Drow? ahead and see who it is I will we're in complete darkness again yeah I don't have any lights yes left. I will put my hand on Kessa's shoulder and like nudge her forward with me see how she'll go do you want to come with me you're not loud oh sure why not So just keeping one hand lightly on her shoulder, I'm gonna stealth forward. But I'm assuming she's also like very stealthy, and we've noticed. Yes. Do you want stealth checks or perception? Or what yes, you please. Uh, stealth check first. Can I select? All right. Uh, Kessel like disappears in the darkness. So does Panoply because that's what she does. But like, you can't even hear Kessa as she's moving along. Uh, eventually you get to a point in a cave where you can see the light from the fire ahead of you. I stay outside the range of the light. What 
Who I see? In the firelight. See if I can get this. Let's grab shooters. Grab who? I'm gonna pull one person. There we go. Are you being pulled to a scene? Yes. Okay. She is, not us though. Which is probably intentional. Yeah, she wandered off by herself with, well, with Kessa. Sorry, gotta choose sneaky front ends. So I don't see people, but I see are those fishing poles of some kind or some kind of device? Yep. Uh, it looks like a big camp. And make a perception check. You're pretty sure you're, you hear very guttural humming or singing. Can I tell the language? Yes. Easy. Uh, can you? Um. Yeah. Uh, you, do you know Undercommon? Yes, I do. How yeah, about it's, that? It's singing in very broken Undercommon. Single voice? Yeah. Very deep, gruff, guttural. Is Casa still right with me? You're pretty sure? I saw it. I think it's be a dwarf, but I only hear one right now. That camp is big enough for several. Do I see Kessa it? Kessa appears it? right beside you. Look down at the floor. What is on the floor? You see a giant-sized footprint. one are the tracks like a lot of lot of giant one giant one giant two others one is probably fine or see her nod or anything yeah get put into a soup. I go back. Uh, there's a big giant up ahead, but it seems to be the only one. Maybe you're probably okay to lead with that. You think, I mean, we should just get rid of it. I think that's not something we want. I mean, it's on the way. There's not really another way around. like we want to talk to it but I mean that's an option too Arvin it depends if we speak the same language uh, it's <clears throat> under common I speak it do you speak Tier it Tiercian might be able to help with that I mean I can understand it I can't speak it uh, <clears throat> let's see I mean, maybe if you just tell, stay with me and tell me what to say, it'd be fine. I'm not good at thinking about that when I meet new people. Um, let's go ahead.
Or no, you go ahead. Still staying here? No, I mean, follow behind us. Just... I'm not going in the light, so just don't go in the light, maybe. All right. Did you say it was mumbling, talking to itself, singing? It's singing. So, oh, good. Do I hear anything it's singing about if I listen for a minute? We can work with that. It's like the dwarfs go marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. Repeat that to The drow go marching two by two. Hurrah, hurrah. The, what else lives down here? The Darrow go marching three by three. Hurrah, hurrah. The sniver refuge. I hate those things. The, the, the dark gnomes go marching. Five, four, five, twenty. Twenty by twenty. Hurrah. That doesn't seem very smart. What should I say? I am going to pull out my loot and quietly and building up in volume play along with the tune that this guy is singing. Uh, as he does that, you understand an undercommon Iglon? Is that you? Another one he's talking about. Iglon, that sounds nice. Maybe somebody uh, else or how to play an instrument. Uh Kaim will uh he will be the percussion to this song that Arvid is playing. <laughs> With the sound of his armor, he'll clank at it to the beat. Alright. Both of you make a performance check. Oh, this will be a great, great performance. I can tell already. All right, respectable. Iglon, you learn new trick. I will give you treat. I presume Panoply is the only one understanding this. It says he's, Iglon is something learned a new trick, and he'll give him a treat. Okay. That sounds like a terrifying beast pet. Um, you might want to introduce our presence to him. Well, let's continue this song. Keep playing, and I'll keep stepping to it. <laughs> <laughs> Do mind if their marches? No, they don't march. We're not, we're not Iglon. Are you, but we like your music. What? Who that? Play louder. Iglon, where are you? And you hear donk, 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 donk. Wait, I got a VF with my percussionist. <laughs> there we go. And this creature shows up. Keep dancing, or keep, keep playing. Yeah, I'm doing a little Irish jig. <laughs> yep. And his one huge eye looks at you. you Get play. out of my home! I don't think it's working. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Oh, no. <laughs> we were going to become friends. <laughs> I could make friends with the creepy tentacle lady and a giant. Oh, my God. Wow. Well, we can't say we didn't try. <laughs> What's your musical are... group going to be? Let's combine your names and have Carvin? Mm, that's only if we're going out. We'll you know that scene in Monsters Incorporated where they like start doing a, a Broadway show? <laughs> yeah, tip in the hard hat. We're almost there. <laughs> 
my stepsister and her two cousins had a girl band growing up. Names were Jacqueline, Alex, and Michelle, and they were jam. I was like, wow. actually, that's fucking clever since you guys are, what, eight? <laughs> like, I'll give it to you. 